everyone, it's Sevi. Kokomi has returned to the limited character banner to convert more Kokom rats to her cause. So here is my updated guide on how to build and play Kokomi to be the best that she can be. I'll cover her talents and kit, gameplay styles and tips, talent priorities, constellations, stat priorities, best artifact sets, best weapons, and best team comps. Let's begin! Kokomi's role is that of a Hydro Applier plus Tank and Healer. She accomplishes this by having a kit that's geared towards constant Hydro application, strong heals, and an HP-focused build. Let's go through her talents. Kokomi's skill summons a pet jellyfish called the Bakekurage. This pulses every 2 seconds to deal area of effect hydro damage, apply hydro on enemies, generate a particle if it hits at least one enemy, and heal nearby active characters. The healing is computed based on Kokomi's max HP, while the AoE is quite large, wider than Mona's taunt skill, which is helpful for ensuring your enemies stay wet. However, when you activate this, she applies hydro to herself for a brief moment. So beware of self-freezing if you have the cryo aura on. The jellyfish has a 12 second duration and the skill has a 20 second cooldown. So it would have some downtime, but thankfully this is where her burst also comes in. When you use Kokomi's burst state, it activates a couple of effects. First, if you've unlocked her first passive talent, she refreshes the jellyfish's duration when she activates her burst. However, note that the jellyfish still has to be on field for it to be refreshed. Otherwise, if it already expired, then it won't have any effect. This also does not count as recasting her skill. It merely prolongs the duration and the jellyfish will stay in its original location. But this is an important characteristic because it allows her jellyfish to have 100% uptime if you can juggle her skill and burst properly. The idea is that before the 12 second duration ends, you should recast either skill or burst to keep it going on and on and on. Second, her burst makes her normal and charged attacks perform party-wide healing. With this, you can easily replenish everyone's HP very quickly. Third, her burst state also lends her increased resistance to interruption so that she can make the most of her field time, but it's not full immunity as she can still get staggered with certain attacks. And fourth, it increases the damage of her normal attack, charged attack, and jellyfish based on Kokomi's max HP. By how much exactly? Let's do some quick maths here. Her burst scaling page shows a percentage of HP that's added onto her auto attack and jellyfish damage. Take note that this addition is a flat damage value that's added on before bonus damages, like Yunjin and Shenhe's buffs. Then her second passive further increases that percentage of HP by 15% of Kokomi's healing bonus. So for example, let's say Kokomi's burst is talent level 8, so it adds 7.74% of her max HP to her normal attack damage. Then Kokomi has a 75% healing bonus. So taking 15% of that, which is 11.25, that's added onto the 7.74%. The resulting added damage is about 19% of her max HP. Math and computation aside, what does this all mean? Simply that HP and healing bonus are advantageous stats to Kokomi because it also increases the damage she can deal aside from the amount she can heal. Do note though that the incoming healing bonus from Hydro Resonance doesn't count towards this, unfortunately. Oh, and it also lets her walk on water. Great for exploration, catching fish. The last thing to know about Kokomi's kit is that her last passive decreases her crit rate by 100%, so her base crit rate is negative 95% in exchange for 25% healing bonus. This was a heavily criticized characteristic of her when she came out, but her kit hasn't been changed since then, so it is what it is. And we work with that. And she definitely does not need to crit to perform her key role, as most of her ideal teams are reaction based with other units as the DPSs. So since we understand her kit, let me also quickly discuss some gameplay tips since she can fulfill different purposes. Kokomi can be used either mainly off-field or on-field. If she sees more as an off-field support, then you'll cast her jellyfish, rotate team members' skills and bursts, cast Kokomi's burst before jellyfish expires to refresh its uptime, then swap her out immediately. But if you need emergency heals, let her use some normals during her burst. However, in this case, she's mostly just there as a hydro healing turret. 
Then, if you want her more on field, it's about using her auto attacks when in her burst state. This allows for that party-wide healing and makes her a hydro enabler and driver, meaning that Kokomi's attacks help proc your other party members' abilities and reactions. So for her on-field attack combos, my tips are you generally don't want to use her charged attack because it costs 50 stamina and the animation takes too long. But exceptions would be if she's in the Sukokomon team or if you're enabling reverse vapes for Sheng Ling. The reason for this is because it doesn't share an internal cooldown with her normal attacks, so it helps apply Hydro even more to prepare or trigger reactions. If you're just using her normal attacks, then you can do jump cancelling on her second or third normal. This just involves jumping at the end of that specific attack to cancel the animation and save a tiny bit of time, but it's totally not required to learn. However you play Kokomi anyway, you can guarantee that her Hydro application will be consistent and she's good at making your enemies very, very wet. Her talent priority will depend on whether you're playing her off-field or on-field. If you're mostly playing her off-field to enable Hydro reactions and aren't too concerned about healing, she still works at very low talent levels. But if you're going to level her talents, prioritize her skill and her burst alongside it to maximize any additional damage and healing her skill can give, then you can leave her normals alone. But if you are giving her field time during her burst, then you just want to prioritize all of her talents equally so that she can deal decent damage while on field while enabling reactions. Now for her constellations. First of all, I want to emphasize that her kit is already complete at C0. Her most glaring potential problem is her energy recharge for her 70 cost burst, but that can be easily remedied by certain weapons and building ER stats. It's good she's complete at C0 since it makes her a pretty free to play friendly character. So pulling for constellations is really mostly a flex slash simp thing. C1 gives Kokomi an extra hit of Hydro damage along with her third normal attack. Aside from adding damage, it applies Hydro separately from her normal attack string, so it can help her perform vaporize reactions a bit more consistently. C2 is kind of a bad, almost useless constellation. It gives you stronger heals, but only if the character being healed is below 50% HP, which is a rare occurrence in the first place if Kokomi is on the team. Kokomi's heals at C0 are definitely more than enough. C3 simply increases her burst damage, which is a very incremental upgrade to her damage output. C4 gives her faster attack speed during her burst and adds an innate energy regeneration mechanic. How good is this energy regeneration? Let's say that an average player can get 19 hits within her burst duration just by spamming normal attacks. Each hit restores 0.8 energy, so 19 times 0.8 equals 15.2 energy. It's a decent quality of life improvement to her energy costs, but of course, don't neglect building ER stats on her as she'll still need them. And if you get interrupted, dodge, or can't hit enemies, then you don't get any energy refunded, so utilizing this effect might be inconsistent. C5 increases her skill level, only useful for diehard jellyfish lovers. C6 just adds more damage to her burst attacks with a very easy condition to fulfill. And that's just it, more damage. So as you can see, her constellations are mostly geared towards increasing her damage. C2 increases healing, but it's barely going to be triggered. And C4 adds innate energy regeneration. But ultimately, Kokomi's job as a Hydro Applier and Healer is already very complete at C0. Now for stat priorities. For Kokomi, you're mostly after HP and ER stats. For some general goals, giving her 130-150% to energy recharge should suffice in most cases. For max HP, she can typically reach 30,000, which is already adequate for even corrosion situations. For her sands, HP% percent is the main priority, but use ER% percent sands if 1. You can't reach her ER goals with artifact substats, or 2. You're playing her off-field, which means she'll be getting energy almost purely off-field, which is diminished compared to being on-field. For her goblet, use an HP or a hydro damage goblet. HP gives more healing, while hydro damage gives more damage. But her healing is usually still enough, even with a hydro goblet. Then for her circlet, you really want healing bonus. Healing bonus can only be found as a main stat on a circlet, while HP can be a substat. It benefits both her healing and burst state damage. An HP circlet is alright, but yields significantly lower benefits. Now for her best artifact sets. 
Let's start with her full set options first. The Tenacity of the Millilith set is a great option if you are particularly using her as an off-field support. Due to the jellyfish's wide AoE range and its consistent ticks, you can practically maintain constant uptime on its 4-piece effect, which is beneficial for other DPSs you'll team her up with. Then her signature set, the Ocean Hued Clam, was eventually introduced to give her a damage bump. It lets you create your very own pimple, which deals AoE physical damage when it pops. Helpful, especially against enemy mobs. It's best utilized if your Kokomi spends a lot of on-field burst time, since that's when you can heal the most. If you're aiming to increase her personal damage, this is still recommended over the Heart of Depth set. As for combinations, you can choose among 2-piece healing bonus artifacts, tenacity, emblem, and heart of depth. If you are lower AR and can't farm artifact domains yet, I'd say the Exile or Scholar sets are okay to help address her ER needs. Even just having no set bonuses is acceptable to prioritize the main stats. But of course, going for the mentioned 4-piece sets helps a lot in either giving her more buffing utility or damage. Now what about Kokomi's weapons? The good thing about Kokomi regarding her weapons is that her best choices are very accessible and free-to-play friendly. You'll want weapons that give Kokomi HP, added energy utility, or make her function as a better support. First is the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, which you can easily refine to R5 and is pretty cheap to ascend and level up. Kokomi also makes great use of that HP substat and of course, uses the passive to buff a character on the team. This choice is great even in late game and it works better on certain team comps like Sukokomon where a DPS makes good use of the attack buff it gives. Moving on to 4 stars, my top recommendation is the craftable Prototype Amber. It's already good on R1, refunding 12 energy for Kokomi after she uses her burst and healing her teammates Due to the value it provides, especially being refinable, this is much, much more recommended than the Moon Glow. Next is Inazuma's craftable catalyst, the Hakushin Ring. Although the passive says it requires an electro-related reaction, Kokomi can very well use it in an electrocharged team. If she procs Electrocharge with a Hakushin Ring equipped, both the Hydro and Electro characters on the team will receive the Elemental Damage bonus. It also comes with an Energy Recharge substat that's still useful to Kokomi. Just keep in mind that this weapon doesn't fulfill its potential outside of an Electrocharge team. Last of the free-to-play weapons is the Oathsworn Eye. On Kokomi, it has a bit of a rotation problem which I discussed in a previous video. Essentially, I would still recommend Prototype Amber more, but Oathsworn Eye has the best aesthetic for Kokomi and is still somewhat usable. What about other 4-star weapons? Well, in general, she can't make full use of crit weapons or Favonius Codex since that relies on crit hits. Putting sacrificial fragments on her allows for easier repositioning of her skill, but if you have a Sucrose, I'd rather give that weapon to her. As for 5-star weapons, there are two prominent choices. One is the Skyward Atlas, which is just overall great as an offensive weapon. The only thing it has going for it is being a stat stick and it contributes absolutely nothing to Kokomi's support utility. The second is her signature weapon, the Everlasting Moon Glow. This weapon gives her an HP substat, a healing bonus, and it lets Kokomi regenerate a teeny bit of energy on her normals. But it's simply not worth the primos. At R1, it's it's barely an upgrade over Prototype Amber and needs more refinements to significantly pull ahead. Also, spending primos on a weapon that only like one or two characters can use, namely Kokomi and Barbara, is pretty inefficient in the long run. At least Prototype Amber lets any Catalyst user become a healer. So only pull if you want to complete her aesthetic, though I would argue that Oathsworn Eye already does that. Now let's talk about Kokomi's best teams. The interesting thing about Kokomi is that while Sing Cho is great for vaporized teams, Kokomi is great for electrocharge and freeze teams. Why isn't she as optimal for vape teams? Well, Kokomi's jellyfish can enable vaporize, but it ticks at set intervals compared to Sing Cho, whose rain swords are procced alongside your pyro unit's attacks and can more consistently and easily give those vapes. It's doable, but again, not optimal. What about Kokomi as the on-field enabler for vaporize? 
Well, the only off-field pyro character who can efficiently create vape reactions is Shang Ling, but she can also rapidly overtake Kokomi's hydro application unless you start spamming charged attacks with Kokomi, which isn't practical due to stamina. Somewhat workable, but not as efficient as simply using Sing Cho or Child. Electro Charge and Freeze reactions, on the other hand, can be Kokomi's bread and butter, since those reactions aren't reliant on crits, don't remove auras immediately, and make good use of steady jellyfish pulses. Also, Kokomi can enable them from both on-field or off-field. Here are some specific comps to try out. Starting with Electro Charge or Taser teams, you can assume the general template of Kokomi, Electro, Electro, Animo. These Electro units can be Fischl, Beidou, Kaching, Raiden, Yae, or Lisa. For Animo units, your best choice is Sucrose, followed by Kazuha, but other Animo VV units are still usable. Then there's the Sukokumon team, composed specifically of Sucrose, Kokomi, Shangling, and Fischl. Sukokumon is a very powerful team that combines Electro Charge, Vape, Overload, and Swirl reactions into lots of explosions, but it is difficult to execute in terms of gameplay. Kokomi is integral to the team because of her 100% Hydro AoE application uptime. Mishichan has an easy to follow guide on Sukokumon discussing the character builds and rotation. I'll link it in the description. For freeze teams, there are lots of variations. You can pair Kokomi with Ayaka or Ganyu, who will make use of her jellyfish for a permafreeze comp. The other two slots can have a cryo battery and animo unit. Kokomi also makes a good substitute for Mona in the Morgana team or Mona, Ganyu, Diona, Venti comp. In which case, you can replace Diona with Kaya or Rosaria so as not to have two healers on the team. Lastly, Kokomi can be the on-field character in a freeze team if paired with Kaya, Rosaria, and an animal unit such as Sucrose. This is a very cheap and accessible team that's easy to use, since both Kaya and Rosaria are batteries in themselves. However, if you choose to use Kazuha in this comp, be aware that his plunges can cause shatter. Kokomi has proven to be a versatile unit, so I'm excited to see what other comps she can form in the future. So everyone, that's going to be it for this Kokomi build guide. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like and let me know down below if you're planning to pull Kokomi or if you have her already. I would love to know. Don't forget to consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!